I'm Colin Singer, immigration lawyer and managing partner of Immigration.ca. Canada Immigration News Articles, September 2014. Canadian Immigration Law, Too Much Red Tape and Not Enough Customer Service. For decades now, Canadian governments of all stripes have promoted immigration as a tool for nation-building. One of the purposes of Canada's immigration laws is to support the development of a strong and prosperous Canadian economy. Unfortunately, this goal is often frustrated by bureaucratic red tape and an almost total lack of customer service. Last month, the federal court decided an immigration case that demonstrated what happens when an immigration officer misses the forest from the trees. In this case, a prospective Canadian immigrant was refused a visa because his reference letter did not outline job duties that matched the required immigration criteria. In the case, the prospective immigrant needed to prove that he supervised and coordinated staff or assigned work to certain employees in order to qualify for immigration. In refusing his application, the officer found that because the employer used the words helping, assisting, and aiding in the reference letter, the prospective immigrant did not actually carry out the required tasks outlined in the immigration criteria. While the immigrant won his case, the big question remains, why did this case have to go to court in the first place? The case would not have gone that far if the immigration officer in question called, emailed, or even faxed the immigrant's employer to ask for clarification. Instead, the officer refused the application and thousands of dollars were spent by the government and the immigrant's attorneys in court. Does one really need to go to court to determine if helping to supervise is really supervising? Are these the important questions of our time that taxpayers need to spend money on in order for them to be considered by judges and government lawyers? If Canada wants to develop a strong and prosperous Canadian economy using the tools of Canada's immigration programs, refusing an application on details such as this could have easily been clarified and the process followed does not serve anyone well. Unfortunately, the case is not an isolated example. One only needs to look at the general red tape that bogs down the immigration system routinely to see how frustrating immigration is for our future immigrants, employers, and taxpayers. One breathtaking example is the number of pages an individual has to complete to immigrate to Canada. For instance, if a Canadian wants to sponsor their foreign spouse to Canada, at least 29 pages of forms need to be completed. If making decisions without seeking clarification or requiring people to answer the same question multiple times is not enough, there is a bigger problem of hidden immigration rules. Over the last year, Citizenship and Immigration Canada has changed numerous forms multiple times without warning. When an individual submits an outdated form, that individual runs the risk of having their immigration application returned. Immigration lawyers in Canada have suggested numerous times to Citizenship and Immigration Canada that a formal grace period be allowed but such suggestions have fallen on deaf ears. Such suggestions would not really be reinventing the wheel. The U.S. authorities already have such provisions and policies in place. Is a little customer service really too much to ask for when individuals and businesses pay hundreds if not thousands of dollars to have their immigration applications assessed? Unfortunately, in the Canada module, the answer is yes. My commentary. The immigration landscape under the Harper government has become, since 2006, restrictive, inflexible, litigious, and more enforcement-driven than in recent living memory. Yet, Canada continues to be a sought-after destination despite this unwelcoming process. Source, CBC.